All great researchers started out having done no research at all. We all started out as amateurs. So when I was asked if I'd like to do a talk here today at the TEDx thing, but that first I'd have to do some research, I still leapt at the chance despite never having done any research in my life. Because all greats have beginnings, but if you never begin, then how can you become great? I decided to start easy with a subject that there was already a lot of work into, the media, and more specifically advertising. How many we see varies greatly from person to person. If you're out and about in a big city like London or New York, New York, you're going to see literally thousands and thousands of ads everywhere, on billboards and buses, on cars and buildings everywhere. But I decided to um, focus more on TV ads. Again, varies on how much TV you watch and how many you see. But one reoccurring theme I found is that if you're not white, slim, heterosexual and young, then you don't exist. As for sexism in advertising, the occurrence of males and females is equal, although what they're doing is not always equal. I wanted to say that a lot of improvement has been made, and sexism isn't as common as some think. But on close inspection, I struggled to find a strong-looking woman at work that wasn't either sexualized or just a brief glimpse. The majority of women in, women in adverts are cleaning or cooking or being something just for the men to look at. Men can be found doing a lot more housework now, so at least improvement is underway. But if there is one thing that is undeniably sexist, it is the voiceovers. Men almost always do the voiceovers for unisex products, while women will really only do the voiceovers if the product is undeniably female, like makeup or gossip magazines. A small scale interview told me that we seem to trust men more to tell us about things like banking and cars and things. And we only trust women to tell us about cleaning supplies and beauty products even the kind that men use, like soap. This simple observation is supported by other professional researchers. Although it may not seem important, subconsciously we take in a lot more than what we think. So subconsciously our brains are sensing that if you need expert advice, make sure it's from a man, because the TV told you so. And it's like this that advertising both creates and reflects society in a vicious circle. As advertising shows men as experts, thus creating this illusion in our heads that we come to believe, the advertisers see this in society, this belief, and they reflect it in their adverts without realising that they put this idea here in the first place. We can, um, hold on. <laughs> we can use this idea of creation equals reflection in relation to ethnic minorities. Blacks, Asians, and other ethnic minorities make up 13% of the overall British population and up to 30% of London's population. Yet only 5% of ads include any sort of ethnic minority at all. Blacks, Asians and... Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Advertising creates this image of a white nuclear family. That's the cliché mum, dad, 2.5 kids type of family. Adverts promote this and then we come to expect it in real life. But in reality, we find diversity, as is normal in a multicultural society like Britain. People expect happy, white, nuclear families. So that's what advertising keeps giving us, at the expense of showing society as it really is. All these problems with ads, and I was even focusing on beauty ads, the one where only the unnaturally photoshopped people live. Normal ads tend to feature fairly average-looking people, always thin and white, but fairly average-looking. <coughs> The makeup ads for makeup and the clearer, cleaning looking skin are full of people who are so perfect, even without the makeup, that they clearly didn't need the makeup in the first place. Apparently, it's even worse in America, but for the purpose of my research, I decided to stay strictly British with all the ads I chose to look at, which is difficult because it was a pair that all the pre existing researchers from the USA. Now, before I go, I wanted to round this up the way I started with great researchers and small beginnings. This is true of anything, of course. Painters, musicians, scientists and philosophers all started out small. I mean, Einstein wasn't born sprouting out mathematical formulas and Van Gogh wasn't painting masterpieces as a toddler. I'm not saying that everyone who does research or tries to learn something new will go down in history. But research, in a way, is what makes us human. The human curiosity that keeps us going and thus learning new things all the time. We constantly seek answers to the questions that elude us. This imagination and the thrill of discovery is what makes us human, what separates us from animals who just accept everything for what it is. Thank you. Um.